Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of the Swish Waterlad podcast. As always, I'm very grateful to have Swish on board with Waterlad. It is such a cool platform and for such a great cause, with up to 70% of proceeds going to Kiwi Kids Charities. So how it works, if you don't know, if you haven't clicked on the link yet, is you can choose any sports star who is on Swish and get a personalised video message from them for yourself or a friend or anyone really. And in a few days, that star will have sent you your very own personalised video message. There are plenty of lads on there, including guys who have been on Water Lad as well, including All Blacks such as Bowden Barrett, Lester Fanganuku, Aaron Smith, and of course our recent Water Lad star, Sam Kane. And just for listening to Water Lad, you can get $15 off your order by using the code WATERLAD. And to order, head over to hayswish.com or click the link in the description below. Also, the great Pomeroy's Coffee have created the perfect coffee bean for any lad, and they've packaged it up as Water Lad Coffee. I know you all love your coffee, so go and order yourself some of the best beans on the market. Roasted freshly here in Nelson and available in espresso, plunger, or whole bean. However you like to make it, and you can get an extra 20% off your order by using the code LAD. O three, that's lad in capitals. O three. I'll leave a link in the description below for easy access for you. Finally, the lad, the absolute lad, Tim Bateman. He has an offer for you. Also, listen up to this. Cheers, Jimmy. My name's Tim Bateman, and I've been a professional rugby player for the last seventeen years. My plan for life after rugby was to get into the well-being and recovery industry. So I built O Studio, New Zealand's largest well-being and recovery centre. Despite the challenges of COVID. We've seen consistent growth in our business and we've decided to expand O Studio throughout New Zealand and abroad. It's an exciting time for the wellbeing industry and we're looking for top lads to be a part of it by opening your own O Studio. If you're interested, head to ostudio.co.nz slash lad to inquire. Back to the show. Oh. What a lad, what a lad, what a lad, what a lad. tune well today guys i have one of the genuine good guys of new zealand rugby one of the kindest caring lads you'll ever meet and a bloody good player as well he's a true wellingtonian who played most of his career in wellington for the lions and the hurricanes where he was a very influential figure for both of those sides he also reached the ultimate heights of the game in new zealand playing for the all blacks and he had a stint over in france with Argen. He is one of the greats, John Swolger. Welcome, mate. Cheers, brother. Thanks for having me, bro. Mate, thanks for coming on, mate. Some journey. I'm um, looking through your career again last night. You've had you had a hell of a career. Yeah, well, I, I was just blessed, you know, and just coming from um, Puriro has um, has been one of the the good stories, you know, because uh, Jerry Collins was pretty much our uh, our light and our figure that we followed. So um, it was good to have someone like that, um, just to make sure that anyone coming after him. Uh, we followed suit and just given 100 percent but knowing jerry he would have smoked us if we didn't listen to him so uh, we did everything we could to make sure he was happy <laughs> no it's awesome to have another um i guess role model for those kids in Porirua and in yourself and i know you're giving so much back to the community at the moment um for those who don't know what you're up to give us a bit of an insight into what you're up to now so at the moment just helping out um the mirror and um and Piri over in um, Wellington College. Uh, there's a few uh, kids from Porirua that are out there. My son was lucky enough to uh, to get in and um, and go through there. But on the other side is um, trying to put a program together with a, a few of my old school mates just to try and upskill the the next generation in terms of um, you know career path, but also using sports as a you know as a vehicle just to bring them all together and. Hopefully we can find what they want to do in life and see the world like uh, like we did. It's so cool to see you giving back so much to the community um, and like you, Pity, Nimea, um, helping out at Wellington College, giving back to them. Those kids must be stoked having three genuine superstars of the game um, coaching them. Yeah, well, when you take coaching aside, it's good. You know, we get to um, know the kids, um, you know, in a different level. But once we uh, once boots on, switch on time... Um, that's when we just <laughs> turn into not uh, not me and Pity, but me sort of turns into Sergeant Slaughter. So um, that's when we just let the general do his thing, and <laughs> as uh, as the lieutenants, we just watch and support what we can do, and then hopefully try and like 
taper down some of the stuff that he's putting on the kids. But you can see um, <laughs> the, the boys afterwards, they feel the pain, but also can uh, can see what, what it does uh, moving forward. Is that sort of conditioning stuff that he gets goes hard at them with? Uh, it's conditioning, it's uh, smashing each other, it's uh, down and ups, all the good stuff that uh, you saw. But for those that were coached by Jamie Joseph would know what I mean by this. Um, so there was no easy day. You had to earn it <laughs> and you had to earn, also earn your rest. So if you didn't earn your rest, you keep going until you're dead. <laughs> but it's good, yeah. It's a good um, and different style from these guys, you know, mm. what they've had previously. So it's just show, showing them what the next level looks like. Oh, that's great. And what's Pity like as a coach? <laughs> no, he's, he's mellow as. Um, he's just like a player, like, like when he was playing, he, he'll, he'll say his bit, uh, critique here and there. And. Um, and just go from, um, you know, trying to upskill them as much as he can, but in a different way. So it's a good balance with Namir and um, and Pity. Yeah, and what's your sort of style? What sort of approach do you take? Uh, well, I'm a bit of a mixture. There's some, uh, I try to be hard uh, in terms of um, making sure that they listen to what I say, but um, also I'll go on the, the mellow side too, just to try and tell them that you can always make mistakes and that that's the only way you can learn. And then if they keep on doing it, that's when I'm like, bro, yeah, on the line. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> but yeah, it, it's a mixture of, 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 of the, the, the hardness and also the soft part of it. But as we grow, we learn as well. So yeah, just like the kids. Yeah, 100%. Oh, very cool. No doubt Wellington College will be a force this year then. But as always in the podcast, I'm always interested to hear um, how the journey started for um, I guess so. Give us a bit of a rundown on your upbringing. Okay, so before I played rugby, I was just into soccer. You know, I don't know why, but uh, it was just what my friends were doing at the time. Um, back in um, Porirua, um, we, we were um, two schools that I was in a Catholic school uh, before for only a week, but I hated it because uh, we could have. They were wearing uniform, I looked across the road and they were wearing mufti. So lucky enough, I got my mum and dad to switch me over and they sort of backfired on me because when I did go to college, all those guys that were there in that first day were actually giving me a bit of grief and remembered me because I was like one of the big kids at that time. And that's when I sort of started um, my rugby path was when one of my good mates ran past my house, asked him what he was doing and then he goes, oh, I'm just going um, to sign up. Didn't know what, what, he, what he meant. Went for a run and then <clears throat> joined um, Northern United Rugby Club there that day. And I told my dad two days later that I joined, can you pay for my fees, give me my boots? And then, yeah, then I just enjoyed it after that. Only because I was I was sort of good at hitting people, <laughs> but then got used to getting hit myself. <laughs> so it was, uh, it was a big difference, but, you know, it was one of those, uh, you know, baptism by fire just to go and get wasted and then and go from there. And then, yeah, I started enjoying it. Um, went through the ranks back at school in, um, in Bishop Villa College, which is known now. And, you know, started enjoying it, made the reps at 16. Um, and then, yeah, the rest was history after that. Mate, what were you like at soccer? I can't imagine you playing <laughs> soccer. Bro, I was only those ones that just, give me the ball. And I picked it up as if I was the goalie. And I'll be like halfway and then pick it up. And they go, no, you can't touch it. And I'll shut up. And I'll just try and hoof it as if I was the man trying to do a, like a box kick. <laughs> But yeah, at that time I was skinny. I think that was the only time I was skinny back then until I got into rugby. I had to be up because yeah. the boys I was like um, going up against, mate, they were like smoking me. I was like, oh, yeah, sweet. But because I had the footwork off soccer, nah, sorry about that. Um, <laughs> you know, and, and, it, <laughs> and I just kept on stepping on me and then they go, no, run a straight, run a straight. And that's what we always did at lunchtime. So we ran a straight, bang, sort of got boring and then we just did turn running it straight into a proper rugby game uh, and playtime, lunchtime. And that was sort of like what we did right through uh, college life. So were you not always one of the big guys? Nah. Nah, I wasn't. It wasn't until I got to maybe um, fifth form, which is year 11 now. Oh, true. I beefed up over the summer. I just, yeah. They said, yeah, beef up. But I didn't know beef up was meant to yeah, get bulky. So I just <laughs> ate all summer. <laughs> and came into <laughs> year, um, year 11 and then I was like bro everyone was like lean and mean I was like oh what the hell <laughs> so yeah had to go do some running there's a, there's a, a road out here um, called the old road yeah. I didn't put it all so 
I went through there a few times because no one can see you, so I suffered back then a few, a few times. How much weight did you put on? Oh, let's just say I put on maybe close to 40. Oh. <laughs> that, that summer, bro. That's a big summer. <laughs> <laughs> bro, because I went from like maybe 65, 70, to like over like 110. <laughs> I was like, what the heck? Far out. <laughs> and that's when I went from number eight to prop. <laughs> Uh, but hey, that, that was a blessing in disguise because I ended up being, uh, you know, in, ended up enjoying uh, uh, prop as well. So, yeah, I stayed there. I was like, oh, yeah, I'm not moving. No way I'm going to yeah. try and get fitter than this, bro. Stuff does. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you mentioned Porirua. What was it like um, growing up in Porirua as a teenager? Uh, it was mean, man. It was tough, but it was mean. It was one of those places like people would just go to, to the park, play around, and you know... Um, when to get home is if you hear a whistle from your parents or auntie and uncle, or when the street lights come up. Once it's turned on, then you know, all right, time to get home. If you don't get home before it's actually dark, then you know what you're going to get. It's not a, just a whack, it's a <laughs> see all four walls in your room. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, but it was good, you know, I, I learned some good lessons uh, uh, back then and it sort of um, steered me in the right direction because I would have been a, a naughty kid if I, if I didn't. Did you have a big family? Um, I had five sisters oh, growing true. up. Oh, Wow. And just you as the brother. Yeah. So I sort of uh, got used to looking after girls growing up. But at the same time, yeah. I had to leave the house so I can go and catch up with my, my, my cousins. Because, bro, being at home, I had to cook clean. Now, after my mum, uh, she'll do that. She'll tell me, make sure I do all this for my sisters. I'm like, are you serious? Really? <laughs> but I had to be in a, a brother. Uh, the, the oldest in the family at the time, um, just to make sure I, I cleaned up and got everything ready for, for the sisters. Uh, but when they got to their age, that was when uh, they can do their own stuff and I'll just go and do mine. So what age is that? Oh, I learned how to cook when I was seven. <laughs> yeah, when I was seven. That's what I think. <laughs> Not at the time, bro. <laughs> I was like, what the hell? I have to do this, man. I want... And I see my friends outside playing outside and I'm, I'm like, Waving to them through the windows, like, oh, I wish I was out there. <laughs> but no, got to do my chores. Sure. What was your go-to meal as a seven-year-old? Whoa. Okay. Seven, it was either bread, tomato sauce, and sugar at the time. Because, <laughs> yeah, bro, I grew up learning how to make my own food. You know. There's your forty kgs. <laughs> there's, your, there's your forty kgs, bro. And then and there's other times that um, um, you know the um, the oil from the um, the leftover chicken or roast that you had the night before, I'll heat that up, get my butter and bread, and then I'll just scoop it. And that was me, man. That was my go-to, bro. If I wasn't uh, if I wasn't hungry after that or full after that, then I'll, I'll look for some more stuff. What can I make? What can I make? Oh yeah, let's try this. Oh shit! Okay, let's eat that. Got no choice. <laughs> Yeah, bro. I was an interesting uh, guy even when we had our uh, pre-matches there and all that stuff all the boys were looking at me like what the hell is that because just food man just worry about yourself <laughs> yeah oh, so, yeah, yeah. came to food I was just yeah I know bro and in terms of rugby obviously you said you moved into the front row um, you were picked up by New Zealand under 16s too eh? so I mean you obviously had pretty rapid growth yeah uh, it was just I was lucky enough to have a guy named um, Alan Muir at that time. Um, he he just got us to, he just told me just to play my game, which I loved the physical stuff, like running, cleaning and tackling. But I, that's, I didn't know how to, like, you know, the work rate off it, off the ball, you know. So I learned the hard way through that. And yeah. that's why he got me to get fit. And then by the end of the year, I was at a good weight. I was, I was fit enough to do what I had to do and, yeah, then I was just blessed to, to make New Zealand 16s that year and then I went through from that. But at the same time, my first rugby game that year, was, I played near Mia the first time. It was Cole versus Via, that the, yeah, and that was our first proper game. Oh, yeah. That's when him and um, this guy named Otto Rash um, broke my sternum. Oh, true. <laughs> I was like, bro, I don't know, I don't want to be far away anymore. <laughs> yeah. But it was, yeah, like I said, it was a baptism of fire, bro. I learned the hard way, bro. 
but I loved it in the end. So when you first made that under 16s, is that when you first thought this could be a career path? Yeah. Once uh, once I first met the, um, the Wellington team, I was like, wow, this is me. Because we were given gears. I was like, when the hell did I ever get gears growing up? You know, unless it was from my grandparents and whatnot, you know. But this had like uh, like the emblem of, wow, this is me. And then I was lucky enough to play well in that tournament and made um, 16s. And bro, that silver friend got me after that. I was like, wow, this is me. And if I can keep doing this. This could be something I, I can do moving forward, and then that was my whole focus from then on was trying uh, trying to make New Zealand team every year when I was at school, and uh, then the All Blacks came into play like wow, oh, I I want to be an All Black, yeah. far far more, but I want to be an All Black, you know. So and you mentioned Jerry Collins earlier uh, about him being sort of the potty to a god. Uh, did he have much of an influence on you in your rugby career at that age? Yes. This is the first time I met uh, Jerry that, that leading up into that um, that year. Um, he found out I was um, part of the like the New Zealand squad before, and then he goes to me. Um, he goes to uh, I, I met him at the creek. I just went because um, my mum told me to go have a um, go get a feed before I went for a run. Uh, I did that, and when I, when I got a pie and a drink, uh, soft drink was was like a dollar. At the time the man pulled up. And he looked at me, oh, he wind down his window. And I was like, oh, shit, this is Jerry. Oh, what's up, man? And he looked at my, he looked at me, looked at my, my, my pie and my drink, told me, what the fuck is that? I said, like, uh, my lunch. Because, <laughs> drop it. And knowing me, because I've, I've, I've been taught never to waste my food, right? I looked at him, looked at my food, and he told me to drop it. I was, Bro, that was like heartbreaking for me, eh? So I, I dropped it. And he looked at me, and, you know, as I dropped it, I was like, fuck. I was angry. I was like, I'm going to knock you out, bro. But, you know, no one's going to do that to Jerry. And he just goes to me, yep, run, um, <coughs> go for a run. And I go, yep, I will. He goes, no, nah, run now. I go, where? I run Porirua. And then I was like, hey, I'm kidding. But at the time, I only thought Porirua was the creek, right? But then found out later on, during my run, this was 4.30 in, uh, in the afternoon, during my run. Um, I found out that the mall was part of Porirua. Whoopi was part of Porirua. Uh, Pukaroa Bay, I was nowhere I was going to run there. Uh, the bay and all the way back. So it took me six hours, I think. What? Yeah, so I ran for six hours because of that dick. I was gutted, bro. But at the same time, I was more kind of, I had to drop my bloody food because it was a freaking Mr. Cheese pie and, and a raspberry drink. I was going, man. But because, yeah, so that's how I learned that Puriro was a bigger place. <laughs> uh, 16 years old, just from one guy. Had you not met Jerry before? Nah, like I'll, I'll see him, but I was too scared to go and talk to him because like, bro, at that time, at least you knew him, then of course you're not going to go up to him. But he was staunch ass. Yeah. So how did he know you, or did he just hear that you're a rugby player? Yeah, he knew because it was a. Um, I think he just keeps tabs on all the boys from Puriro. Oh yeah. But also he had um, the coach I had at 16s was the same coach he had as well. So oh, I don't know if they were communicating or whatever. But man, the minute I saw him pull up, yeah, sweet, hey, what's up, bro? I was nervous as, and then <laughs> drop it, bro. And then go for a run. Oh shit! Six hours later. Ah oh, damn it. <laughs> I missed my assignment so I blame um, I told my teacher because I had to do an assignment that, that night I told my teacher nah Jerry Collins told me how to run he goes I don't care did he tell you to go for a run yes he did he goes well, did you listen yeah at least I'll get a hiding oh but yeah so I used him as an excuse uh, of why I didn't do my assignment that night oh that's so good so then what was your pathway from school once you'd uh, left college? What was your pathway into the professional rugby game from there? Uh, I was lucky enough to be in the, um, the Wellington Academy uh, when I was still in school. With, um, and I had my best mate, um, Anthony Pernisi, that was, that was there. And then Nemea, oh, yeah. Pity and all those guys were all part of that, Tommy Ellison and this. So we had a good bunch in that group. And then all of us were striving to be, you know, an all black uh, because that was always something that they wanted us to to aim for, you know, always aim for the sky and if you miss it then, you know, even better. So 
Yeah, so we got into that and went through all the age grades, which was 19s and 21s, or Colts at that time. And then the Lions was the next uh, step, but also had age grade um, New Zealand as well. So no, it was good good trips, you know, I'll, I'll say that. Yeah, yeah. What, what, what was it like playing um, in the New Zealand 21 age groups? Obviously, you do get to travel probably the first time you travelled overseas, you're with some of your best mates, like you mentioned, wearing the silver fern, um, you're living the good life. What was it like? No, it was me, bro. Uh, it was good because you got to meet other people from other, you know, other um, areas and how they operate and how they um, do things. Um, some, some are a bit weird because it's just the way they they grew up in it, but <laughs> and the environment. And then you have the the Auckland boys are like always out there, real noisy. I'm like shakers, and we were just in the between. <laughs> Um, lot. But I was good, bro. Like, um, it was just more just, I want to say a bunch of street kids, but it felt like, you know, um, especially from us, uh, uh, the island boys, and they coming from, you know, the outback round to a, a, a environment like that, we're like, wow, this is mean, bro. This is awesome, blah, blah, blah. And then we go muck around, do our bit, but the minute you put on the, the, the jersey, eh, it's like you're gone from, your background to like this professional guy that is not even you, you know, but because that that jersey makes you change, it's like it's one of those feelings that nah, this is me, bro. I don't want this to ever stop, you know. So <laughs> it was good. It was good. And you guys carved it up in that tournament too, eh? Smoked South Africa in the final, but you guys had a stacked team when you look back on it. Oh, bro. <laughs> it was crazy, yeah. But it was led by um, um, Ben Atinga, so he, um, <laughs> that's why we thought that he, because he was captain at the time, that he'll be like, you know, the, all this, um, the staunch guy, everyone needs to listen to him. And that. But bro, he was a crack up. <laughs> that's why he made it, made our, that trip so fun, you know, real enjoyable because he made us be us, yeah. not, hey, that nah, shush, nah, listen to this, blah, blah, blah. Mm. He goes, nah, when we train, we train. But when we think, just be you. Yeah. So that's why we were um, we enjoyed it. So because we did that, we were able to express ourselves on the field. Mm. You know, but it was good too. I got to meet um, uh, Ben Franks. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. He was, if for those that know him, bro, he's like to the book guy, man. But <laughs> he was also good. I like, sort of, I started to see the the softer side of him, and uh, it was cool. Yeah. You know, even though he took my spot, I was like. It was good, you know, it was the environment that you play for each other, you compete against each other, but also um, whoever takes it sweet, you just support them. And that's how I learned um, from that that uh, point on to, it's not about me, no, it's about the team, what can I do for the team? And then mm. that, it sort of made me a lot better thinking uh, moving forward from there. It's like, oh, yeah, team first. But I was guarded. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> but you must have gained a lot of confidence from that tournament because it wasn't that long after where you were playing for Wellington with all your idols in a stacked Wellington NPC side. Yeah, no, it was good, bro. Like, man, you know, when you play w- mm. with your idols, you'll be like, uh, it's hard to describe unless you've been in that, that position. Like, I was like, just looking at Tana like, uh, I can't believe it, you're the man. And then me at training, running over him because... Uh, you know, at training we had to think and then they uh, actually got a growling from the boys to leave him alone I was going what do you mean I thought this was training because no 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 we, this is when you look like you're going hard but just make the noise you know <laughs> but with these guys you got to look after them and then when I had a word to, uh, for, with T later on he goes yeah just know when to go handy and when not to especially at, at, as you get older and he goes yeah I know because you're, you're just young and all that so energy cool cool but it won't last I was like, ah. And then when I got older, I was going, see, you were right, bro. That's why you were the man, Tana. Yeah. But just the look of the boys, there goes, bro, I was going, I was that scared. Like, what do I do? What do I do? What the, what did I just do? I just did what the coach told me. Yeah. And I was like, wow. Did anyone sort of help you out through that um, progression into that side? Obviously, Jerry, um, you being a, Potty to a kid must have taken you under his wing, but any other of the boys um, really make you feel comfortable in there? Yeah, oh, I was, uh, was like uh, Naza and, and 
Pal was there because we went through the uh, you know the oh, yeah. age grades together, so it was easy there. And Rodney as well, uh, another guy that I clicked with as um, as my career went on. And we ended up getting close because of the family side of things. But yeah, it was those two. Yeah. But at the same time, it was like you don't want to mess with Jerry, uh, Jerry when he uh, when he gets angry. Eh? I was like, you know, you you pissed him off if he just walks right past you. I'm like, oh damn, what did I do? And then your mind's thinking, what did I do? And you forget about your task or what was happening. Even when I came to the training, I was going, oh, Jerry's angry, man. What the hell did I do? You know, just jogging and then I stuff on my roll and I get growled off by the by the um by the coaches. And the only thing I'm thinking is, I want to get into the, this guy's good books because if he smashes me at training then I won't play, you know? And I'm so glad that he was on my side because I felt his, his shoulders before. And, yeah, I never want to feel it again. So. Yeah. yeah, bro. But it was good. Good lessons and all that and just being honest. He is such an enforcer, eh? Oh. Um. <laughs> There's, uh, there was one, one thing he told me in, in the bus was, just lucky I'm on your side. And I was going, yep. <laughs> yeah, that is so true. <laughs> Please don't leave. <laughs> Please don't leave, bro. So, yeah, just one of those blessings, bro. Yeah. And was your first game up against um, the British and Irish Lions, like your debut? Yeah. I was just lucky enough I got on. I think it was like like six minutes or something left. And I was looking at the coach's box. I was like, oh, bro, yeah. hurry up and put me on. I just want to play. I don't even care if I get wasted. Just put me on. But then uh, after the game, yeah. I... Um, my coach goes, oh yeah, we forgot you were, you were even there. And I was going, you eggs, <laughs> bloody hell. I was there, bro, just because one of the boys was getting injured. Uh, one of the guys I looked up to was Joe McDonnell. He was, uh, he was, um, oh, yeah. he was limping. I was going, yes. At the time, I go, oh yeah, I'll get a half, surely. No, the old man kept on going. I was going, man, get off, bro. I want to run. But, you know, that's, as a young guy, you just want to play. You, know, you really, don't really care. Yeah, even then you were confident in your own ability to perform up against, you know, world-class internationals. Oh, I was confident because I'm, I was from Porirú. I had that, I don't care who's in front of me. I just want to test myself. Yeah. You know, so that's the, the mentality I had. I was, man, I don't know what I can do. Yes, I, I can be okay at training, but I just want to test myself against these guys and, what, and also get the feel of, what the next, uh, next level is like. Mm. So when he did, yeah, when he got on, the first thing I want to do was just run after people trying to hit them, even though if I was offside. <laughs> <laughs> I was going, man, come my way, come away. They went wide. Oh, man. Yeah. Well, that, that mindset obviously helped you because you did have a really quick progression even the following year you are into the Hurricanes. Was it, Did you notice a considerable step up into that environment or... Because there's so many All Blacks for the Lions back then, um, was it not so noticeable? Uh, no, nah, not really. But you can um, feel the intensity, um, the difference between that um, from um, the Lions and the and the Canes. Uh, the Canes was just like because they started a lot earlier. We had that that off season, pre season to know everything. Whereas yeah. the Lions, you go from club rugby into the Lions setup. So, so I, that was the first thing I noticed, but at the same time, it was the fitness. I was like, bro, I don't want to do this. You know, it was like, yeah, and go. And this is when we had this uh, one of the skinniest uh, trainers, um, Wendell, uh, Andrew Brimble. Oh, yeah. This is the guy, the guy that we all hated, like, not really, but, you know, when he trained, when he had a whistle, his whistle, was when he um, has the whistle, the skinniest guy telling us big boys how to lift in the gym. You know, and then he then he comes and smokes us out on the field, and he's just running like, "Come on, guys, yeah, keep going, keep going." And you're like, "Bro, piss off, man!" In, in our heads, <laughs> but at that time, I didn't want to say anything because if he says something, then I don't want to do extras after that because I was dying anyway. Yeah. But I learned to yeah to respect him and and saw why he was so hard on us. Was your weight and conditioning something you always had to try and keep on top of? Yes, it was. Um, the first couple of years, uh, I'll, I'll stay within six kgs um, from you know my heaviest and my lightest in that space. But then later on in my career, I, I was able just to stay on my um my my plane weight. I found the plane weight. I was able to give it a hundred percent, but still be mobile and strong. So that was that was a challenge. It, it took me a while, 
plus that the eating part was still a challenge. You know, you go, oh, treat yourself. Okay, then. Well, my treat is completely different to your treat. <laughs> so if I die on Monday, I'm going to blame you because you said I can treat myself. You know, <laughs> so yeah, I was never a big drinker. You know, I'll go out drink you and that, but I was never a big drinker, but I was a big eater. Yeah, lots of people have mentioned how much you can eat. Um, you can obviously put away a large amount of food. Yeah, when I'm hungry. Um, <laughs> but I would say this, and I'm annoyed with this, is I was never the fastest. There's one guy that will beat me, and you will never expect that this guy, Rip Daz, was the fastest eater in our team. And this is me trying to battle him, lost all the time. <laughs> But at the same time, I was going, it's not about speed, bro. It's how much you can eat. <laughs> endurance. <laughs> yeah, it's endurance, bro. But I, I was, um, I don't know how, I, I think it was Jeremy Frost that told me to, because there was a, um, a place in town, Hog's Breath, and uh, they were running a competition, an eating competition. And he, uh, for some reason, he got me in there, went, had to eat, see how fast you can eat a kilo, kilo steak. So we did that. I went and joined. Mm-hmm. After a minute, I was already like way in front of everyone else. So I rubbed it in by saying, can I order some fries with that, please? I'll just take my time. So I still smoked the, the, the thing in, um, in two minutes and my fries. I looked over and then the next person was, I think, seven minutes. <laughs> so that's when I just got up, went and got a drink, came down, sat down and just waited for them. And, I was, I was, and then I made it even worse by, oh, can I have another one? I'm, I'm just starving now. You know? But I was, yeah, fuck. <laughs> But then I got my, you know, rewards and stuff like that, you know, so, hey, I'll take it, bro. Mate, the kid can eat. And uh, a question came in about um, you back in your day uh, at the canteen. Did you used to polish back some food at the canteen at school as well? <laughs> oh, man. No, so with the canteen stuff, back then, if you see somebody, and this is where we were like scabs back then, you know, we'll, um, we'll see someone with a pie. And me and my, my, my cousin, that, um, that he's sadly passed, but me and him were the worst ones. We just look at that person, tell them, man, you look full. They just bought a pie, right? And they're like, oh. So we convinced them that they were full. They give us our, their pie. We eat it. And then we go and get one of my mates um, who was diabetic. Um, he had like, his mum um, in his bag. was just food, bro. It was just sandwiches. So we would always say to... Um, to the teachers, oh, uh, he needs to take his uh, insulin. We have to go and support him. But really, he goes, we follow, and then we just go eat his food. <laughs> oh, crack up, man. Yeah. Cracked up. <laughs> yeah, cracked up, bro. And then um, during that time, I was I was lucky enough. <laughs> I don't know if it was the, the school was lucky, but I was lucky. Um, I worked at the canteen, and I only lasted two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Make them out of supplies. Oh man, because the boys came, or even the girls, like, like our two lines were a lot like full as the middle pers- uh, line was the um, the owner of the canteen, and they they had no one, and everyone will come. You'll probably like, if you came, Jimmy gave me five cents. I'll give you change, and I'll give you a feed for five cents. <laughs> oh, that's my sort of dear shopkeeper, <laughs> bro. Oh no, man. So everyone just uh, you just got like this, bro. Oh yeah, shop, bro. Give me, and I go, oh, yeah, sweet. What do you want? Oh, okay, sweet. Oh, did you forget? And then I'll go, oh, you forgot my change. Because, oh, sorry. Totally apologize. Yeah. And that. But then at the end of the lunchtime, there was no food, no money. And then, we, yeah, we got in trouble. So we ended up had, um, uh, got told that we had to work for free for the rest of the year. Oh, true. It didn't happen because we, we uh, my mate got caught there. Yeah. My mate got caught, the, I think, two weeks later. So we were fired from that place. Yeah, but I will say when I when my first paycheck with the canes, I went back and gave the the, the money that it was oh, taken. True lad, I borrowed it, okay, and I replaced it. <laughs> oh, mate, that is a big play. Love that. <laughs> the guilty conscience got you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, bro, it was like six or seven years later. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Yeah, I remember. I borrowed this money and I ate the food. So here, you can have this. Oh, okay. But one thing you mentioned before was around um, one of your cousins and the passing of your cousins and 
Mate, going through your journey and hearing some of the stories, mate, it seems like you've been dealt with so many tragedies um, throughout your time, lost so many close friends, lost lots of good mates. So um, one, I don't know where it fits on the timeline, was one of your best mates um, at the time. I think he got stabbed or something um, brutal like that. So what what was that? What How was that to deal with and how did that moment sort of change your life? Oh, man, it was, it was huge, man. Um, so he's he's my cousin, Um my second born is named after him and he's also the godfather of my daughter so he was like the next best thing to a brother to me um losing him was <clears throat> was hard not only at the time but even still now like he was one of those guys that me and him we, we were called the twin towers back then so if we went to a party it wasn't uh to uh, to mess around it was just more to protect our girl cousins that were there and that and uh, he was one of those guys that was real, real loyal to, to family, loyal to friends, and also just a skillful guy. Like he was, you know, he was a different person, and that's why I was attracted to him in, in that in that way of just being around him and learning from him, and also uh, keeping him out of trouble if if he got into it. Because like like I see with the loyalty stuff, if someone gets uh, into something, he's the first one to go in there without thinking. And sometimes you need that, but also sometimes you just need to, to just hold back and think. But that actual that 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 time of my life and my family's life was it was hard to, to you know to take in because he was massive, man. Even around the community, a lot of people found out how he went and wanted to come back, or come down here and seek revenge, or not revenge, but you know seek um, justice in their own way. But it was just to see what the cops in that did at that time was massive because we had maybe three or four big groups of gangs and big units going at it just for one, you know, one stupid thing. But, mm. yeah, he was bigger than life, that guy, man. And, yeah, I, I miss him to this day. Mate, it's so sad, eh? So how did, do you know much about the incident? Was it, was it one of those moments where he stepped in to back someone up? And got caught in the wrong scene. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it was just caught in. Yeah, because um, the the person that actually, um, you know, did the you know the stabbing was more the story. Oh, we, we were told was he lost his his patch or jacket, whatever, earlier that night from a group <clears throat> of uh, Islanders in it. So they went drove around, got their stuff, whatever, and thought that my cousin and our group of mates were, was that group. So it was just uh, the uh, you know wrong identity type of uh, thing, but like my cousin, uh, he will he will just go up and back up whoever's in need, and then all that stuff happened um, along the way, you know, during that time. And it wasn't until I spoke to his little brother, he was there at the time. Um, what actually happened? And when he told us, like a few weeks later, I was more up, uh, broken because of what he told me. So yeah, I was like, man. So there was a lot of hate, a lot of anger yeah. at that time. and <clears throat> But then over, over the years, um, he, he was able to forgive those people. And I, I was, I, I think I'm still not there yet mm. as a, you know, as a person right now. But I'm just glad that, you know, my cousin has, has, has given that forgiveness and that. And it sort of made me think, oh man, if he's done it, then how can I do it? So now for me, it's just finding how can I forgive people that's done something like that? Mm. So, yeah, bro. And how did you get back onto your normal life, like um, still juggling your footy career? How did you get back to normality? Oh, man, I think it was more because we were already, you know, we, we had a routine. You know, we got given, you know, the weekly plan and stuff like that. So all I had to do was just focus on that. Yeah. Yeah. It was the hardest times was when I was alone or like if I was driving into training or driving back home or if I was by myself. That's the hardest time because that's when, you know, the brother just hits you, and I just then I just think it. Then <clears throat> I have a cry in the in the car as I'm driving, and I'm like, bro, what? You know, it's all those what ifs. Mm. If I was there, if I was, you know, I was yeah. So that was the toughest time um, in that space, but. And then I tried to get into this, uh, I hooked up with, uh, what's his name, with Steve Simons, you know, at that time. And we ran a program, a youth program over at Tower College. 
uh, for a couple of years, which just trying to change the way the kids see life and try and tell them that there always, there's always a, um, you know an opportunity if you just seek help. But we we wanted to be that you know the connection between yeah. the help and and what they want to do in life. So it was yeah, it was good. It, it grew me as well, helped me um, grow in a different way and see um, kids the, their struggles even now. That it's just the same as everyone else's. It's, it's just um, teaching you just to be kind to people because you don't know what battles they they have in, in the background. 100% mate I love how much you give back to um, the youth and your community it's so cool but did you was rugby sort of like a um, distraction for you was it sort of something it was like your getaway now you mentioned the routine of your structured week and stuff was the best time so going to rugby was um, awesome for your mind just to get away from it all yeah it was it was, um, it was, it was something that got me up every morning anyway like like the <clears throat> the environment at the Canes and the Lions was was good, you know. It made me get up, and also just talking about other people because the boys will talk about their their struggles and that. And it was good to actually um, bounce off them in that space, and we supported each other, and just all, always like, oh, Barry, if you think, just give us a just give us a buzz, you know. Not only that it was um, the gaming. Uh, we were into uh, Call of Duty at that time too, so all that stuff just took. All the, you know, all the pain in that away. Uh, I don't know if it was a good thing that we uh, how we did it, but you know, at the time was I was just trying to put it to the side because it was, you know, it was just, just too hard to, mm. to take in. Is it true you used to um, play your wife on Call of Duty when you were over in South Africa and she was back in New Zealand? That is good stuff if that's true. <laughs> it's true, um, and we also had a um, put a, um, a a clan together, so it was me, my wife. Um, uh, Namia, Victor, uh, my good mate, um, uh, Spruce, uh, Anthony and his brother. So that was our clan. And, uh, yeah, we'll smoke all these teams on the thing. And then we'll always, um, cause my wife was on the game. She's really aggressive. You know, she's the type that will kill a lot. <laughs> and she has that, um, that smack talk to back it. <laughs> so I won't I won't say stuff because some of the stuff was like out of it, but yeah, she'll she'll have the high kills but also high deaths. Whereas <laughs> us, we 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 plan, you know, we stick to the uh, our our roles. Oh, yeah, you're the sniper, yeah, you take them out. Um, Victor and that will be like the um the, the guys will go plant the bombs, yeah. and then um me and uh, the other guy, uh, me and Spruce will just um will just come in and back you guys up. But if you guys die, all good, we'll take that kill. You know, but it was always about how many, all the deaths, uh, kills, but low deaths. Whereas my wife was like 1.1, <laughs> but she didn't care, man. But so every time we come home, this was the routine. We'd get up, go, she'll do her mum stuff and that, uh, get back from work about maybe 5.30, get the kids, have dinner, get the kids on bed by us, um by seven and then she'll go down to our room because she we had a playstation down there and i'll stay up here because there was a playstation up here and then we go yep mum and dad online team her <laughs> let's go you know we jump on and we do our bit and then <laughs> that's pretty much my diet too bro because i hardly ate you know during that time but it was good but yeah she was like one of those ruthless ones that yeah, yeah. and everyone goes nah your wife's better than you go like, nah, shut up i'm better than her. look at her kd scores bro She's like died more than me. Like I, I was like one point five, but Anthony was like two point something. Yeah. So he was the best out of all of us. But yeah, man. Oh, I love that. But obviously, it didn't affect your form because obviously you ended up getting called into the All Blacks, didn't you? So um, tell me about that whole experience of being called in uh, and named as an All Black. Okay, so before that, you know, me and Namir had a, a meeting with uh, the All Black coaches in town at one of the hotels. Like, I didn't even know what was going to happen. But I got told uh, from them, hey, did you get a, a, a call from who? But then, um, I, f- I don't know who was the manager at the time. Just said, oh, yeah, um, you got a meeting with uh, these guys at this place at this time. I was like, oh, sweet, got there. Uh, lucky Nemi was there. And then we got uh, had a meeting, sat down. Straight away, we got growled at by um, Shag, Ted and, uh, and Smithy. They were like ripping into us. They were like, 
bro, I don't, I, I'm just here with this guy, but also I got told to come here. <laughs> and they go, so what do you think that you guys can do better? How can you guys challenge each other? You know, those sort of questions. And at the time, I'm like, I don't care. Yeah. I'm just listening to my coach and I'm just doing my job. But that's what I was thinking. I never said anything, <laughs> you know. And then um, then they just go, yep, so this is the thing. We're looking at you guys, okay? Just make sure you guys step up. I think we had two more games prior to that. And then, um, and that was one of the two good games I played that year in, in the, the, to finish off the, our season with the Kings. And then, yeah, when I got selected, um, I didn't know I got selected because I was with JC because he came and picked me up, took me uh, to trainings as he does. And then after he goes, oh, did you make it? I was going, make what? He goes, did you make the AP? He goes, I don't know. I'm just here with you. You told me to come with you, so I'm here. And then I didn't find out until the afternoon um, after our training. So I think Jerry already knew. That's why he told me to get uh, go to train with him. And then once it was announced, but I was passed on by one of our media guys for the Canes in, bro, like, it was one of those, shut up. You're, you know, you're shit, bro. Yeah. You know? <clears throat> and then Jerry just looked at me, smiled, and walked away. And I go, bro, where are you going? <laughs> you're my ride. <laughs> I got to go home. I came with you, remember? He goes, no, I'll be back. Bro, he didn't come back until maybe three hours later. But anyways, yeah, I went through that, uh, f- uh, I, you know, I was a shock, but I still didn't believe it. Mm. So when we uh, went through all that media, oh, how do you feel? How do you feel? Blah, blah, blah. I said, in my mind, I was going, bro, I honestly don't, don't know how I'm feeling at the moment. Because right now, you're still all shit. That guy on my right just left. So I don't know if this is legit. Normally, you'll see your name, you know, yeah. they'll name it, and you're there, you know? Because, oh, yeah, all the, the new caps, blah, blah, blah. And that, but because I was still at rugby league at the time, it, it didn't feel real yeah. until I actually um, actually put on the, the, the jersey for the first time when we played um, uh, Canada. That was the time that um, I actually felt I was an All Black because before holding the bags and all that stuff, I just wanted to get in there as you do. Yeah. But at the same time, I was like, wow, this is Richie McCord, this is Dan Carter, oh my gosh, this is Carl Heyman. Yeah. Oh, Jerry and Rodney, were, I, mean, I was used to them anyway, but... Mm. Playing, uh, being on the same team with pretty much like the best players in the world at that time, I was like, wow, that was the biggest bust for me, eh? But again, mm. the first thing they said to me when I got into camp was, okay, uh, once you go talk to the nutritionist, they're going to have a plan for you, and blah, blah, blah. And then I was like, bro, can you just let me enjoy this moment? <laughs> first thing you can tell me is to go see the nutritionist. I don't give a shit about the nutritionist. I just want to soak this thing up. You know, it's like, man, I want to talk to the coaches. Not actually to talk, but just, I just want to look like I'm talking to the coaches. <laughs> but and just look at the, you know, to see, oh, oh, superstar, superstar, superstar. Damn, this is mean. Yeah. You know, but that's that was the first thing. And then, oh, yeah, sweet nutrition. Ah, oh, man, come on, bro. <laughs> Let me live. Sheikers. <laughs> yeah, so I ate grass, bro. I ate grass for the whole freaking camp, bro. A little bits of uh, of meat. I was like, yeah. So, mate. And what was it like when you were out on the field? Oh, it was good, though. It was amazing, bro. <laughs> it was like, yeah, just play your game. But at the same time, you know, when, they, when the coaches say, play your own game, you don't know if that's the truth. You know what I mean? Because mm. I'll say, yeah, play your game. And then if I stuff up, I'll be like, you told me to play my own game. <laughs> I, yes, I lost the ball, but you told me to play my own game. You know, but it was like, oh man, it was just a different feeling. Um, uh, you know, I, I had tears, you know, just thinking about it uh, at that time, and I just wanted to play for um, yes, my family, but it was more for my daughter. That was because she was just one at the time, and I just wanted to to play for her. Like yes, I had my mum and dad, and they were p- and proud of me and my partner at the time. Is my wife now, but it was the only thing I had in my mind was playing for my daughter. So, man, I wanted her to. To know that you know, dad is doing all this for her, and that's how I. That's that was my motivation leading into that to that game and during that game as well. And you had the Rugby World Cup just around the corner, eh? At the end of that year, was that ever a motivating factor? Uh, to be honest, bro, I was just I just wanted to to give them my all. If I got selected, then I'll that'll be a bonus. But I was more just one because I was still shocked that I actually made the the, the team at the time. Yeah. 
but when I was there, I just didn't want to, um, cause Kevin, uh, Kevin Melami was one of our, my, my mentors and he just told me, just look after yourself, um, learn as much as you can and then ask questions and that. So my whole focus was just making sure I didn't muck up, you know, but I still express myself, which was mm. when I was playing, when we did play touch and all that stuff during trainings, that was the only time cause everything else was, yep. Yeah, Hold the bag. Yeah, no, stuff this, man. Give me a hit shield. I mean, you know, tickle shield. I want to tickle somebody. You know? But it is what it is, bro. Got to listen to to the big dogs when they're in there. <clears throat> and what were you like in the meetings? By all accounts, the all-black meetings are always pretty tense and intimidating, get called out a lot. Um, what were you like in there? Bro, I, I was shitting myself, bro. You know, because when they come in, the, 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 um, the Crusaders boys was always sitting in the front. And then I see the Auckland boys at the back, so I was like, okay, because I'm from Wellington, so I sit in the middle. But then um, I got told to sit in the front, so I sat just behind. Um, the, uh, breath, uh, not not breath, one, um, the other one, Ruben, the other thorny, Ruben. I sat behind him, yeah, because he's a big lad. I was able to hide, but man, just those meetings, eh? They oh, man, they'll call you up big time, honestly. So whoever have been in that in those uh, meetings know what I'm talking about bro they will rip you to shreds because like, what are you doing here oh yeah so what, how come you did this and then I was going oh my goodness <laughs> I don't know if I should be here I don't want to be caught out like that you know but it was, it was out of it eh? and then they'll always finish with a positive and then they go oh yep yeah. uh, the best tackler uh, bang give you a jersey and you have to wear that jersey um, during trainees and that so it's just acknowledgement of mm. your you know the past game which is good but that that was like uh, just learning all that stuff. I was like, fuck, I can't believe rugby is this. I thought I was just mm. go play, you know, play hard, blah, 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 stick to this and this. But the homework that goes behind it is like going back to school. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I right, got your books. Yep. I was pretty much just writing, 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 looking up, writing down. Like, can you get back? But I was too scared because the, the slides were going too fast. <laughs> oh, man, damn it. Uh, what was that slide? Can I, can I, can I uh, copy your book? <laughs> bro, I felt like I was back at school, bro. Oh, shit. I, I came here to play rugby, not the fucking... But, you know, it's just lessons, bro. <laughs> and this is the funny thing. Jerry never had a book. Jerry, no one questioned him. <laughs> yeah, he'll have a notebook. It will just come and sit down and just watch. And everyone else is like, like this. Now they got iPads in there and, you know, they got apps in there. But, fuck, uh, this was going, bro, no one tells this guy off. No one tells JC what to do. He does his own thing. But that's, that's what I mean. I said, fuck, this guy is the realest of the real, man. <laughs> I was like, You're the man, bro. <laughs> And then um, you obviously didn't make the Rugby World Cup squad, so how was that to deal with? Did you were you pretty gutted when that was announced? No, not really, man. To be honest, like I said, my expectations wasn't to, um, wasn't even to make the APs. Like I was looking down the track, like a couple of years down the track to make mm. it, because I just wanted to establish myself as a a starter for the Lions and the Kings. But so that was just like a bonus. Whatever, if I did go, awesome. If I didn't, then man, then I know what to do uh, moving forward. How can I be better? So I learned a lot that year. So when I went back, it wasn't about um, you know um, missing out. It was just yep, sweet. I've been here. What do I do to get back in here? You know, and I think that's when my focus sort of changed. How do I have to get back into the ABs instead of how do I enjoy my rugby? And if I make it cool, if that was just a bonus. If I don't, it was a waste of time playing that year. So it wasn't until maybe <clears throat> I missed out, I just missed out the year after and I missed out completely that mm. in 2009. And that's when uh, my mind changed to, uh, I just want to play and enjoy it. And whatever happens, happens. And yeah, 2010 and Liverpool were pretty much my best um, years in playing, you know, both for the Lions and the Kings. I just enjoyed it. You know, it was like, man, big years. And everyone goes, oh yeah, I want to make big beast. Oh, awesome, bro. Uh, it, was, it wasn't my focus, it was just if I can play the best I can and if I get selected, cool, if I don't then hey, I still got another campaign to, to focus on, so yeah man, I was I was content day eh? it was just good. Right, so, so then the move over to France uh, what was the reasoning behind this one and where did, how did that one come about? Um, well I spoke to uh, Colin Cooper like a few years back 
Um, I just said, I'll stay here as long as you're here. And then I'll go after that. Because I, I knew I wanted to go to France anyway. Because all the boys were going, yeah, man, go to France, go to France. Go, oh, yeah, 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 as you do. But then it wasn't until um, I had my kids at the time. One was, uh, I had a one-year-old, a three-year-old and a five-year-old. So I thought this would be a good time just to go away. Um, maybe two, three years, whatever. And if we ended up staying cool, if we came back, then cool. You know, um, it was more, I was still young enough to go away and then come back if I had mm. to. And when we went, it was honestly, as a family, that was the best time of our lives just to spend more time with family uh, together because we had no one else to, you know, to count on but ourselves. We met some amazing uh, families over there. Got to see the world in a different space as well. Mm. The rugby was crap. Like, it wasn't up to the level of how we were here. And that, but it was um, it was different. Uh, but you know, the family life was, was amazing. Mm. You know, and I got to see you know, my wife and like the the person I saw was the person I fell for. You know, back in the days. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So she came out of her shell, which was cool. Mm. My kids were um, growing up. There was uh, I had my two translators, <laughs> my daughter and my son, because sure. I was still crap at it. <laughs> And yeah, and then, yeah, it was just, it was, it was good, eh? It was mean. I, I, I wouldn't change, I wouldn't change that f- you know, for anything. It was, I think it was just the best time to go and the best time to, to experience it with my family at the time. Mm. Before you left, had there been another tragedy with your niece? Yeah. Or that been a part of the move? Um, not really. Uh, it was more. We were already planning on, on, on leaving at this time. That's why I told my agent that the year before yeah. to start looking. Um, but that was, yeah, that yeah. got me good. Um, me and, you know, my, my wife's uh, family good because she came down here just to visit us, you know, uh, just after New Year's. And she was meant to stay for, in her sister for a couple of weeks. And then that happened, yeah. It was just out of the blues, man. Um, went down... Took my daughter's um, bike because I was just, just going to the to the shops just to grab something because we just got back from the lagoon with the kids, and I was just going there to grab maybe ice blocks and whatnot, and then and tragedy happened, bro. And far ah, I was, I was like I was frozen, man. I was like, what the heck just happened? Because it just happened within seconds, bro. Were you there? Yeah, we were. Um, because she was she was just going with, uh, with the kids and, and my wife. And his brother and I was here with uh, the sister-in-law and and the baby. We were just like, just in the lounge, and all we heard was screaming. And we're like, mm. "What the heck?" And, I, and then Nick minute, ringing the ambulance, and we were trying all we could to you know to revive her in that, but it wasn't to be, man. And that was that time I was praying my my ass off. I was going, "Man, please." Just bring her back, whatever. I just want a miracle, blah blah blah. Yeah, I was. I was like, but at the same time, to me, I was thinking, bro, not again. Mm. Why? This is yeah, too young. Like I was like, man, she uh, she was an amazing kid too, you know. Um, and just to lose her that way, and the fam, you know, my wife's family at the time, I was like, oh, God, I just couldn't. Um, Handled it, and if I was, and I was just thinking, man, imagine if that was my my kid, mm. you know, how much pain and suffering the parents would have went through. I was like, man, uh, they, I don't wish that upon anybody, you know. You normally, I just want people just to grow old and go, you know, the right mm. way, you know, live your life and that, but not at that age. So, but again, I was just lucky enough with the boys at the, you know. At that time, all the support that you guys gave, and I was, yeah, that was my strength too because I was struggling. Mm. I was trying to be strong for my um, my wife and her family and that, but at the same time, I was like, oh, "What the hell am I gonna do? Mm. You know, how can I support them if I'm weak?" But all the messages and that, because I keep strong, blah blah. blah. Oh man, cheers, bros. So I was good, and then that year was like, "Yep, I knew this was gonna be my last year here." So I'm going to give it all I can for the boys and whatever happens, happens. So, yeah. Mate, it's so strong to be able to get through all those tragedies and, um, you know, stay so positive and 
keep playing so well? Yeah. Well, it was just more just remembering my mum just to always keep my faith. But this is all my aunties and all the females in my family. Eh? They're, they're crazy. They're either they're the punisher, the sheriff, or your, you know, your God-saving person to get you out of anything. So they were always hard with church and and God and all their stuff and always told me just you know, always have faith, stay positive. The positive side was the hardest part, but it was yeah. just, you know, just saying I'm I'm not here for me, I'm here for the boys and the boys will be here for me. So I want to make sure I show up and show them, bro, I'm here, I got your back. Let's go, let's go. You know, so mm. yeah, I was just lucky to be in a, a supportive environment, so you know, I was just blessed. Love that. And so you said you, you obviously loved your time over in France. Your family really grew and um, flourished over there. And then you came back to New Zealand, came back to the Hurricanes. What was the reason behind that move? Unfinished business or um, you'd had enough of France? Uh, it was unfinished business, but also it was just I, the rugby, I honestly didn't enjoy it. Um, they, yeah, yeah. they When I got there, I was there was some stuff I was like, they will scrum just to get a penalty instead of, bro, let's attack. We've got firepower. Like, honestly, that team that I was with, um, they could play, but they weren't given the chance to play. I was like, oh, let's scrum. Oh, hell no. Let's go line up, get close, bang. Let's le- unleash you guys. And then it, it was like that for two years. And I was like, bro, I don't want to be doing this. I want to enjoy my rugby, you know. And, um, yeah, and the team was struggling as well. Like, I think they will getting close to relegation and that and it was just more man do I leave now or do I just stay but then you know Hammer at the time um, gave me a lot line to come back so I took that and just enjoyed whatever I did back at home or back you know back in France and then when I got back I just wanted to try and get myself back into the you know the shape I wanted to to, to play and compete but my mindset did change I was like nah I just want to be here to support the boys and all the the props at the time. I just wanted to be, like, just to guide them as much as I can. Like, I honestly didn't care if I if I played. It was just, oh. like, what can I do? My my time in the game is is running up. What can I do to help benefit the the lads? And then one was to compete at, at trainings, and the others was just to try and get them to to be the best they can be. And lucky enough, I had um, Reggie Goods at the time, but he was. Great player, good player, man. I'm just glad that he had to retire due to concussion. Mm. But you know, he was an up and comer. We had um, Ben Franks that came up from the Crusaders, and um, Jeff was there as well. So we had a good bunch there. Um, but again, it was just more how can I support these guys? And I was already looking forward to the next part of my life anyway. Mm. If it was like two, three years down the track, so be it. Mate, that's what I remember about you, obviously, when you did come back, how much of a team man you were, always giving um, what you could to the side. And like a lot of people say, they didn't care if they were selected or not, but you genuinely looked like you were there no matter what um, to help anyone you could and um, share on your knowledge that you did. And I know being good mates with Reggie, how much he got from you and um, all those other props have kicked on to have some pretty um, successful careers. And I think you're a big part of that. Mm. Uh, just a little bit it was just more me just yeah I just wanted them to be the best because I mean I've, uh, when you see uh, amazing talents like, wow, imagine if you harness it in the right way I still don't know how to do it myself but you know I was just giving little tips here and there and then just going through through that motion but yeah I enjoyed it that's when I sort of started enjoying the coaching side of things so I was like oh yeah this could be something I can do but I, I just looked at my kids Mm. How can I coach my kids? But you know, it was it was mean. It was mean. Some good stories along the way. That's why when I look back at it, I've, I'm glad I saw what I saw and did what I did with the boys and saw them <laughs> what, what stupidity stuff they you know all that all that bro what the heck. But at the same time, we're so lucky we didn't have social media back then <laughs> as well. <laughs> I was like, bro, if this came out, you will be on your ass. Contract ripped. I don't know what the hell you'll be doing. But, you know, I was just, yeah. It's funny when I look back at it and me and the boys catch up and talk about some of that stuff. Because remember this? Just, not today, mate. Not today. <laughs> oh, yeah. 
yeah, some good times. So then why did you have to retire? Um, was that an injury-forced retirement? Yeah, it was. Um, uh, 18 months prior, I had um, – I got – Block clots, uh, block clots, sorry, block clots, fresh there, um, in my lungs. And I was, uh, but I didn't know at the time. Uh, so I played maybe three or four games with it um, in the year 2014. And my last game was against the Crusaders when we just won down there, mm. when Alapati scored in that corner. But yeah. I was like the whole game because Jeff got injured and I had to freaking play the rest of the game. And... Yeah, oh, I was struggling. And then the boys will go, man, you look unfit. Work on your fitness. I'll go, bro, you know how hard I work, bro? Mm. Like, those that know me, I'll, no, I'll train until I'm gone. But it wasn't until my wife kept on telling me, go get checked. I go, I have as a chest infection. And then got checked. Uh, found out we had blood clots. I didn't know what that meant. They just said, lucky it didn't go to my brain or else I would have been dead. Oh, like, right. Holy shit. Okay, that's strike one. Yeah, I know. That was strike one. And then I got it again later on that year. And then if I got another strike three, then I would have been out in terms of um, playing. Playing my first game against Taranaki. Um, and this is when Brody got injured as well. Oh, true. So this the sick. Yeah, so it was the same game. He got a concussion. I ended up getting a brain bleed, but we didn't find out until five days later. Again, my wife, go and get checked. No, 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 I'm all right. Let's go, doctors. No, I'm all good. I'll be all right. And then next minute had a scan, and lucky enough, um, the mere sister was um, one of the um, one of the nurses. Sort of must have saw the, how I was. Fast tracked my um, my scan, got it done. Yeah, got a brain bleed. Lucky I came in that time because if I came in later on, who knows what would happen? I was going, shit, that's strike two. <laughs> so yeah, and then yeah, later in that week, um, Steve Simons and Brody came to see me at the hospital, and I was like off my face bro I, I can just hear them it's because you know when you have a concussion or you know some type of brain injury mm. um, your senses uh, your senses you know heightens big time like, I can hear them coming down the, the hallway and it's like maybe 50 metres away but yeah that's mm. when I said no nah, I'm done that's when I knew I don't want to go through this again because if I do or if something happens who's going to look after my kids you mm. know even though they're the you know, life insurance and shit, but they won't have the dead around, so that's when I caught it. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Mate, fair yeah, enough. So. Jeez. That's brutal. That's quite scary, eh? Um, if you hadn't checked yourself in, how uh, brutal that could have been. Oh, well, that's the thing. When I was going, fuck, strike two already. The hardest part was um, just telling my, my daughter and my son at the time, because oh, dad's not playing anymore. Um, and then my daughter broke down, and then my, dad, oh, my son goes, why aren't you playing? What's wrong with you? Because uh, that brain is useless at the moment. <laughs> he, and plus, um, you know, all this other stuff. So, yeah, I did that. And then um, later on, um, so that, that was it. Retired from rugby completely. But then, lucky I, I did. In three months, I had a blood test. And they said I got the syndrome that um, will cause your blood to clot um, right through. So now I'm on um, blood thinners for the rest of my life. Oh, or, you know, how long I have left. Yeah, yeah, so that's why I gotta watch uh, any type of contact, um, physical stuff. Even at the gym, I gotta be careful on what I do. Any cut, I end up bleeding out. So, so mate, oh, yeah. <laughs> I was gonna put cotton wool on me. Yeah, <laughs> so that's the thing. You go from a guy that's like loves his rucks and mm-hmm. you know all the contact to don't touch me, don't hit me. <laughs> mm. I might bruise easily. You know, so. Yeah. Did you miss that I part of the though. game? Did yeah? I was gonna say, do you miss how much do you miss rugby? Yeah, I missed it, bro. Yeah, I missed the. I was telling my my physio, I go, bro, I miss the taste of blood. I miss the smell, the the feel of you know your body sore, because you've earned that right to be sore, you know. Yeah. And also the camaraderie and all that stuff. Um, yeah, I missed all that, bro. So. I can always. Um, I'm slowly getting back to, into like talking to people and that, like like yourself and that. Because prior to that, the first couple of years, like I uh, hit rock bottom. Like I was depressed. I was in that. Uh, I don't give a shit anymore type. Because uh, not because I retired. It was just because I couldn't do what I wanted to do. You know, I wanted mm-hmm. to be a police officer. Leaving for uh, after I left, so I was already looking to the next part of my life. Now that that sort of stuff. 
So, yeah, so I didn't know what to do until, you know, I got some help and they sort of guided me into into what I'm doing now. So, you know, just, just lucky, bro. But rugby will, is the reason why I'm still here. So, yeah. uh, you know, I always say I'm blessed because two strikes, bro, I would have been in the ground. Crazy. So how, you mentioned um, obviously the mental health issues. How did you get through that part? Because obviously it's a hugely common part of society these days. Lots of players even are struggling with it. Um, lots of guys suffer from it post footy um, in that transition. Um, how did you deal with it? Um, I was put on a program with, um, from um, from New Zealand Rugby, but I was lucky that they got me with a psychologist, but also got me a physio type sli- uh, slash uh, trainer. Because talking to somebody is one thing, but actually getting in and doing something in terms of exercise and all that and having someone there talking to you, encouraging you, telling you to do this and what not to do that, that was the thing that got me through. And the last 18 months has been the best I've had because of those two uh, two guys. Um, they were always in my ear um, telling me you know, what to do, encouraging me to, to just, just to give things a go. Not not a not a yeah go go hundred percent because when I did get told that like a couple of years ago, I went for a run at the lagoon just down the road. I ended up falling into the lagoon because I went too hard. <laughs> I said, oh no, you but you told me to go hard, I'd go hundred percent. I was going, yeah. So what happened? Because I saw my t- you know well, the the track I was on, and then next minute my vision went that way, and I ended up falling into the, the bloody lagoon. <laughs> But yeah, there was like a a, a, a mum with the dog. And they just helped me up, and I was just going, "Now you know, sir. It's hotty." <laughs> but really, bro, my my vision went like this, and then just <laughs> okay, yep. So I told my physio, he goes, "You're an idiot." Because yeah, I know. But when you tell me to do something, I'll do it. Yeah. So if you tell me to go hundred, hundred percent, I'll go hundred percent. Now I was like, "No, nah, no, nah, we'll start at 50. 51, 52. <laughs> yeah, bro. Oh, mate, that's so good. Oh, but good to hear that you're um, in a good space now and um, obviously giving back all you can to the community and obviously you're a great dad. You've got three very talented children who no doubt New Zealand will be probably seeing a lot more of over the coming years. <laughs> well, good luck to that as long as they listen, man. That's the only thing. Because <laughs> these days, man, you tell them what to do and then they're like, uh, okay. Okay, bro, I'll tell you now because I've been there, done that. Yeah. Just shut up and do it. <laughs> she goes, goes, oh, but, you know, ah, shut up. Uh, but I'm learning. <laughs> I'm learning. My temper is, uh, my fees is like, bro. <laughs> yeah. Oh, mate, as we all are, mate, kids are, kids are challenging. There's no question about that. But as always, we have gone to our Instagram for some questions and um, there has been some good questions come in for you, so we will try and rattle through these. First question, this one came up the most. It was uh, very common. Pretty much goes like this. Uh, what does aggression look like, John? <laughs> Whoever said that, oh, I'm sure it's one of the boys, and I'll tell you now, boys, stuffies all. But I'll tell the story anyway. Okay, so this is what happened. So this is in um, 2008. Okay, uh, we were going into the All Black camp. Uh, we did our trainings and then we had one-on-ones, right? And then um, I had one, it was my turn, went <clears throat> nervous as, bro. I took my book as if it's going to be a, a session. First thing they tell me was, oh, what can you bring to the team? I was like, what? I don't... So I was like, I was like thrown back at it because I was going, why are you asking me? Why am I here? You know, that's, that was my, my thinking. <laughs> And then they go, um, and I go, oh, oh, um, a Christian. And then uh, Shay goes, oh, what does that look like? Oh, fuck, I was being a dick, thinking he was just joking. I went, huh? You know, just as a jerk? And then I go, no, 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 you know, I mean, um, like aggression into the, uh, into the contact, you know, hit them and all that, you know, I'm, I've learned how to be good at cleaning out. Um, and just being really physical and stuff like that. And as I was talking and saying that, Chrono um, Senior was like, like that. And then, I, and, I, and then that went on, did my thing, walked out. I was going, what the fuck did I do that for? And then the first person I was told was Namir because he was there, right? 
It yeah. was my roomie. I went in, I was going, fuck, fuck, fuck. And he goes, what happened, what happened? He goes, bro, I can't believe it, bro. He goes, sorry, what happened? Fuck, man. So I was a dick, bro. Okay, brotherhood. You know, when you say brotherhood to the <laughs> boys, they, that means brotherhood. You know, you got your back, all this, the war, bro. I support you. He goes, yeah, brotherhood, brotherhood. Okay, sweet. I told him what I did. He goes, oh. And then I thought he got up just to go to the toilet. The ducky head opened up the door and closed it as he went. And he was all you hear was like, <laughs> and then he ran and all you hear was, wax, wax. Bro, he went and told everyone. So by the time I got to the team room, the strappy room, all the boys were giving me shit. Because what does aggression look like? I go, Naza, you duck. You said fucking brotherhood because you know no i said brotherhood no you said brotherhood because no brotherhood and then lawaki one of the biggest mockers in in life yeah. you know before he passed bro he was just giving me that and he gave me all these different expressions of what it looked like and i just cracked up ali williams gives me shit too and everyone's going are you serious go bro no i honestly thought it was a trick question so because i was i didn't understand what they were telling me I just thought I'd be a dick and do that, which in reality, it made me look stupid, but at the same time, because um, Ted, um, Shaggy and, uh, what's his name? and Smithy were just like sitting there like this, and crying because he was at the back, he was like this, <laughs> just doing that, I was going, oh shit. So when we had our, um, our scrum session later on in that week, he goes, are you alright? He goes, yeah, what's up? He goes, just your um your one ones because oh no no oh, oh, I just thought I didn't understand the question and then he goes oh okay cool <laughs> just um okay let's go <laughs> I was going oh shit man I was, crying. I was just okay never mind move on but because on the mirror the idiot he goes and tells everyone and then any time I'm in like uh, any whatever team I'm in because all I hear is oh remember. What does that Christian look like? And I look at him and go, you fucking dick. Why did you tell him that? Doesn't mean to be between us. And this is where I will never, ever trust your ass ever again. Stuff you, bro. And we still talk about it now. Because remember? Or oh, he would we'll just go, her? And I'll, I'll try to grab the closest thing and try and throw it at him. Eh? Not an egg, bro. Oh, so good. Cause <laughs> Obviously, everyone knows about it now because that question came in so many times in different formats. So. <laughs> oh, oh that yeah. so. I knew that was going to happen, yeah. Because that's what I got from um, some of my um, um, messages too. Was goes, what does aggression look like? And then I just <laughs> give them the finger or just a ha, 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 but really, shut up. <laughs> you went there. <laughs> oh. oh, I love it. That's a, that is a good yarn though. Good stuff. I love stuff like that. Okay, next question. What happened at New Zealand under-16s when you filled your plate with food? Oh, who the hell? Ty, if this is you, you're a dick, bro. <laughs> so this is, um, again, bro, you're in the environment, you're like, fuck, I can't believe it. This is amazing with the Institute of uh, Rugby and Palmy. And, you know, when you see food all lined up, it's like, yo, time to eat, bro. But then you see all these guys having little, like, little, like, Small plates, food. I was going, what the hell? How new? I grab the biggest plate deal, and then I'll go and it was like a smorgasbord, bro. I was like, oh, yeah, oh, this, this, this. So my plate was like this, like with the food. <laughs> <laughs> it was like a freaking pyramid, bro. <laughs> and then I, I, I uh, me and the other guy, uh, John of we smoked it. Oh, shit. <laughs> uh, we smoked it, and we went for seconds because there was heaps of food. I was like, bro, this is going to be a waste. I went up and then the second time and then the manager, bro, growled me off. He goes, what are you doing? No, that's enough. Go sit down. You already have it. Blah, blah, blah. I was going, oh, what the hell? Where's this going to go? And then the boys behind me saw that and then they oh, yeah, sweet. So they, went, they acted like they weren't going to go for seconds and they put, um, there was like a tray that you put the um, your, your other plates on when you're finished. Yeah. They did that. I turned around. I was going, you guys, don't worry. <laughs> Take it for the team. <laughs> Take it for the team. And that's when I knew, oh, yeah, sweet, don't eat too much, or I'll just keep it down, and then <laughs> I can go for seconds, as long as it's not a pyramid. 
<laughs> oh, man. Oh, so many lessons. <laughs> oh, but they blame me for it, eh? Yeah, always blame the big guy. Eh? Yeah, bro. I oh, know. Okay, next one. What did Jerry Collins say to you before every game? Oh, <laughs> don't disappoint me. <laughs> oh, true. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we go, yeah, yeah, sweet, good game, man. go hard, go hard, go hard, get to him, and then he goes, don't disappoint me. He goes, okay. <laughs> oh, damn, man, how can I not disappoint you? You just put more pressure on me. Shit, man. Yeah, but that's what he he'll always tell me. Or he'll just give me the look, and you know what the look means, you know? Yeah. 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 But there was one time we were, um, I think we played the Waratahs. Uh, they kicked it. Um, Cliff uh, Palu, I think was his name, the, the yeah. number eight. He ran it, and all I could hear behind me was JC smash him, take his head off. And then I'm like, what the hell? So instead of that, I just made the tackle, right? Yeah. And then after that, when I got up, I looked at him because I must have been a penalty. He, I looked at him, and he, all he said was, I fucking told you to smash him. I was going, he ran away. <laughs> <laughs> I had to run after him. So that's what I really like. Yeah, so that's what he will tell me. Either give me the eyes or tell me that disappoint me. <laughs> oh, he was sounds like such an enforcer, eh, mate? He would have scared the shit out of me playing with him. Oh, I was scared just being on the same team because it's like, if I, we stuffed up, I have to go sit somewhere else. Okay, next one. Um, this one's from our sponsor, Swish. If you could get a video shout-out from one celebrity, who would it be and why? Oh, I'll go with... Denzel Washington, he's the man. Oh, yeah. He's the man. He's the he's the god of all the that type of actor. He's the man. All his movies, man. Fuck. Does it really well, eh? He's got that style. He's got that swag. So yeah. if it was anyone, it would be him. Mate, you've even got the Denzel um, goatee going on, too. Nah, because that's all I can uh, grow, bro. <laughs> I'm not like all you guys that can freaking grow all these bloody things. So every time we go to South Africa, we have to have facial hair. Oh, yeah. I go, and I was lucky enough when I when you're over fifty games, you don't you can choose. But yeah. man, because oh, you got to grow a beard, bro. I can't grow a beard, so I always hated it. Eh? Yeah, same here. Okay, two more. Best Andrew Horse story. He seems to come up a lot throughout the Waddle Ad episodes. So surely you got a good one. <laughs> okay. I got two of him. I got one. We were in Africa. It was a day off. Um, we were, I think we were playing the Sharks, right? And he goes, oh, yeah, let's have, just have a drink. So it was just more uh, us tidies. Um, so it was Pig, um, Naza, and that. So we just went down to the to the um, hotel bar, had a few. Coops comes down, sees us jolly, and he goes, oh, this is amazing. Cool, enjoy your night. <laughs> and then that was the go, uh, the okay for Hori goes up. Oh, this this drink, he goes, oh, we got training. Uh, or, or we had a day off, but he goes, oh, we got training. He goes, no, I'll be all right. But no one drinks like that guy. So we honestly must have went through maybe a few dozens, maybe more. By the time um, I woke up, I was had. I think it was like one o'clock the next day, and then, um, bro, I know. And then I was, and he he was just walking around like it was nothing. And then we trained on 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 Thursday, captain's run on Friday, and then we played. I think the Sharks. I think, but me and Namir was like, fuck. How can we do this? We have to play well, or us one, we're gonna get dropped, or two, we're never gonna drink again like this. Yeah. We, after the game, first thing he goes is, let's do it again, eh? <laughs> nah, fuck that. I ain't gonna do that, bro. Oh, I hate this shit, bro. He goes, I don't know how he can do it, but I can't do it. He goes, nah, nah, it's team bonding. Coops, like, he loves it. He loves that we were like connecting and then stuff like that. I was going, yeah, my connecting is different to your connecting. I can't connect like this, bro, because I won't last. And he did that. And then the, <coughs> the other story was when we were in South Africa, um, Kimberley, we, we didn't play that game. And um, um, those DDs had to go to uh, do some fun activity. We, he took me out to the sh- shooting place on his farm. And um, he was teaching me how to shoot, right? Finger the eye sweep, because I was like, man, this is the real life Call of Duty stuff, you know? I've got a sniper, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> the next minute, 
he so he was just showing me all the stuff. But what he didn't tell me is, you know, the scope. Yeah. It has to be far, not close to my eye. So I was like, oh, okay, cool. So we were practicing uh, some shooting, blah, blah, blah. And then we went out, actually, and he was like, oh, shoot that, um, I don't know, it looked like a freaking big deer or some sort over there. And then I go, oh, sweet. And I go, kill it, because, yeah, bro, I was nervous as hell, eh, because I've never killed nothing, you know, shot anything. And then next minute, finger on the back of the truck, and I went to shoot, and I thought I got it. But at the same time, the scope, bang, came, hit, <laughs> hit me in the eye. And then I go, fuck, did I get it? Because, yeah, no, you got it. And then I looked, and there was dust. So I, I shot these, um, I don't know if it was like termite um, things, whatever it is. But that's what I shot because there's heaps of them around. He goes, nah, he got it. I was going, whoa, the man. I thought it was because I, I saw the actual deer on the ground. So I thought I shot it. But it was the um, the guy that owns the ranch. He shot it. <laughs> he was my my backup. So here's me thinking, farm the man with a freaking like thing around my eye. And dust coming up. And he was just telling me, oh, bro, you're the man. I was going, and he was rubbing it in. And then it wasn't until the guy told me the truth. And I, honestly, I was going to flip and not shoot, hurry, but I was going to hit him with the gun. Go, you're a dick, bro. This is your stuff. Let's go. Stuff you, bro. Yeah. <laughs> never went hunting again. <laughs> oh, I never went hunting again, bro. Because I don't trust this guy, eh? Because uh, every time, yeah. You know, okay, no, nah, mate. I don't trust you. I don't know if you're telling the truth because he says stuff like with well, a straight face. So I don't know if he's joking or what. Yeah, I was going, yep, nah. One, I left there with my dignity on the ground, dust floating, <laughs> and this freaking thing around my eye. <laughs> oh, no, mate. But lucky, I, it wasn't. It was far enough that it didn't like break it, because they said if it was real close, I would they were taking my eye out. <laughs> but he was just standing there, just laughing his head off. Ah, I was going, bro, I would have lost my eye. Ah, okay. Oh, bro, you're a dick, bro. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the yarns, I love it. Okay, <laughs> good stuff. Last one. Best piece of advice you have for a Woodland listener? Love to finish on something inspirational and mate. You're an inspiring guy. <laughs> uh, if anything, just take everything that, that comes your way. You know, if it's good or bad, it just depends on how you react to it. As long as you're positive about it, then you'll, you'll be you'll be fine. You know, because you'll get heaps of challenges along the way, and it's just how you react to it. That's yeah. That's how I'm looking at things. I love that, mate. And you've obviously had to do that. You've had so many ups and downs in your um, life already and um, just the way you've been able to confront those challenges and um, enjoy those uh, good moments has been impressive to watch. And, mate, it's been awesome to have you on the podcast to be able to go through all that and hear your full story and um, some of the good yarns you've had throughout your career and post-footy as well. No, all good, bro. No, Pleasure and awesome. Uh, thanks for having me, bro. Uh, it's good to actually catch up like this and that. But yeah, <laughs> if we get the rest of the boys moving forward, just make sure that they keep their stories to themselves. If it's about me too, <laughs> I say, hey, hey, you're lucky I didn't tell you so all these other ones. Okay, so shut your mouth. <laughs> nah, but cheers, brother. Nah, appreciate it, mate. I'm sure a lot of people would have got a lot out of that. <laughs> cheers, brother. <laughs>